Hello everyone, my name is Tiffany and this is my channel, Who's Your Handmade? Happy Vlogmas Day 11! Thank you so much for joining me today. Today I have a collaboration video with Sherry from Granny's Sewing Room. Sherry has invited me kindly to join in on her advent calendar and I am today's um, guest <laughs> a guest guest vlogger with Sherry. So thank you so much, Sherry, for allowing me to um, join in with you on this fun Vlogmas journey. Today I have a tutorial, a couple tutorials for you. I am going to be making a Christmas present for my daughter and I thought I would bring you along on the journey. We are going to be making something that is hopefully useful <laughs> as well as fun for her. So if that sounds interesting, to you stick around. So my little daughter is two. Her name is Addie and if you have been following me for a while you know that she is our world around here and I wanted to make her something special for Christmas. So I got to looking at what she plays with and what she likes to do and I <laughs> discovered a little bit of a need. It's kind of a need but also hopefully it's fun. It'll be fun for her as well. So she has these little animals that she loves to play with. This is um, a Thai brand. I don't know what they're called exactly. Beanie something. <laughs> <laughs> used to be Beanie Babies back in my day, but that was, you know, my 90s childhood showing. <laughs> anyway, Addie loves these animals, but she has this thing about wanting to swaddle them all the time. And, uh, you know, you know what end up, ends up happening inevitably. Mom, will you swaddle this, this cat for me? And I have to do it every five minutes. And so I got to thinking of a solution. <laughs> what could I do to help her swaddle her cat without mom having to drop everything every five minutes? So I had this vision of what I wanted to make and I decided to design something myself. Now, this is not a new concept necessarily. There's probably plenty of tutorials out there. Um, on the internet, even on YouTube for how to make one of these. But this is my design that I came up with and I thought I would bring you guys along on the journey of making one. So we are making today <laughs> a little sleeping bag slash pouch for Addie's Thai um, little animal here. Thought this might help the swaddling a problem. So the cat will fit right down in here. And it becomes like a little pouch slash a sleeping bag <laughs> for Addie to use for her uh, favorite little toys here. So I have taken uh, the cat's measurements and I have made this according to those and I walk you through that here in the tutorial in the next few minutes and show you how to make one of these for yourself. Now I realize that not everybody's child or grandchild loves these things like my daughter does. So please feel free to take the measurements of your own uh, stuffed animal or 18 inch doll or um, any kind of toy that they love to swaddle or even once a camping kind of experience and uh, take those measurements and then make them for, make this kind of pattern fit your own toy that you have in mind. Also, as a bonus tutorial in today's video, I have a solution for how to wrap an odd shaped present such as this little toy and sleeping bag. I still love to wrap presents. I love for Addie to have the experiencing experience of unwrapping things and opening that kind of thing on Christmas morning, but there's not always a solution <laughs> for odd shaped kind of things like this. They end up in a giant gift bag, which can get costly if you go out and buy those at the store. So I thought I would walk you through how to take normal wrapping paper and turn that into a bag for odd shaped presents. So hopefully that will be of an interest to you. So let's get started with these tutorials. <laughs> Okay, 
Real quick, we're gonna go over what you will need for this project. You don't need very many things. Most of them are already gonna be in your sewing room. So let me just go over the uh, tools we'll need for this tutorial. So obviously you're going to need whatever animal or baby doll or whatever toy that you are making this little pouch for. So I have Addie June's tie, beanie, whatever those things are called. <laughs> I have her toy here for measuring. You're going to need some fleece. Now I have two, two coordinating kinds um, of colorways here. You could do just one, or honestly, you could use whatever kind of fabric. You could use cotton. Um, you could use whatever scraps you have in your scrap bin. It's gonna be really uh, up to you and very customizable. I have used fleece today. So fleece is what we're going with. As far as tools, we will just need some basic items. We need a rotary cutter for cutting out our fleece. I like to have my fabric scissors at hand for trimming corners. I have a ruler here. We'll need to be measuring a few things. So I'm just using my four and a half by 12 and a half creative grids ruler. I like to use these clips with fleece. Fleece is quite thick, so I like to um, use these clips to keep them together as opposed to pens, but I will use pens in a couple places, so that's why I have them here. These are my glass head pens, very sharp, and I like to use those. And then I need a marking tool, so I am using just some white chalk so that it shows up on my fleece. You can use whatever marking tool you prefer. Here is a turning tool. This is what I like like to poke out my corners with. I have a purple thing. That's actually what it's called. It's around here somewhere, but I like to use the more blunt tool for the fleece. And then because I am using fleece, I will be using the Schmetz Universal 8012 needles in my sewing machine. And then the last thing you'll need is something to stuff the pillow portion. So I'm using, as you can see, polyfill, but you could also use fabric scraps or whatever you prefer for stuffing things. So that is what we need. So to get started here with our project, I will take my little toy here that I'm trying that I'm going to make the sleeping bag pouch for, and I'm gonna measure this little toy and you don't have to be exactly precise and I'm just going to use my creative grids you could use you know whatever measuring tool you prefer so it's roughly 10 by make sure I have my 10 by 6 is what I'm going to call it its ears are a little bit wider but they'll bend in so 10 by 6 okay we have measured our cat she measures 10 by 6 so now we are going to make ourselves a pattern you for um, the template to make our sleeping bag. So obviously you don't want to make your sleeping bag the same exact measurements as your cat, your doll, whatever you're making because it's not going to fit um, very well into the sleeping bag. You obviously need a little bit of wiggle room here on the sides and then you need uh, some room there for her head to sit on the actual pillow. So here are the calculations that I've come up with to make the uh, patterns for this sleeping bag. You can decide to make yours a little bit smaller for your um, doll or your animal or whatever you're doing. This step of this tutorial is going to be a lot dependent on what kind of toy you're actually making it for. So you want to measure your toy and you want to um, really kind of think out how you want it to fit into the sleeping bag. For this 10 by 6 animal, here is what I've done. I have went an extra 2 inches wide. So this was 6 and I have went 8 and then I've added a quarter inch for um, seam allowance. So that is eight and a fourth for our width. And then for the length of this pink part here, I have went with nine inches. Now you, you might think, look at the cat and say that was 10 inches and you're only making it in shorter, but it, uh, it really does work out really well. It doesn't stuff her in the sleeping bag. You still have some room down here to wiggle and she sits pretty well on that, on the pillow. So this piece right here the pink is our smaller pattern piece and again that is going to be nine by eight and a fourth 
that I have made a pattern piece. You do not have to do that if you like to just go ahead and cut your yardage. Um, I love to actually have a pattern piece in front of me, so that's what I created. So for the front fold, the blanket, you will, of the sleeping bag, that is nine and eight and a quarter. And then the back part, the base, the blue there, I went an extra three and a quarter inches in length. Our cat is 10. So the blue piece is 13 and a quarter by eight and a quarter wide. I kept the same eight and a quarter wide as I had for the pink because I want my sides to align, but obviously I need more length or the cat's not going to hit the pillow. So for the blue piece, I created a pattern piece. You can see that I played around with my numbers a little bit. What I ended up with was 13 and a quarter by eight and a quarter. So that is the blue piece and we will we will cut two of your longest pieces and we will cut one of the shorter pieces. So let's do that cutting now. pattern pieces cut out. I have my uh, one piece of the pink gingham. That's my shorter piece. And then I have two of the longer blue pieces. That will be my backing. So for now, I'm going to set aside my blue pieces and I'm going to work on this pink piece. So to me, fleece has a right side and a wrong side. The side that looks hairier always makes me think it's the inside. <laughs> it's up for interpretation. So that's what I'm gonna put face up. My hairy wrong side is face up. And I am getting ready to do this step right here. This is the step that I'm doing. I'm making this hem. You can kind of see that hem there. I've done a double row of stitching. I turned it over an inch toward the wrong side and just hemmed it, really. I hemmed it with a double row of stitching. Now, fleece does not fray, so I didn't need to hem it, but I like that finish there. It kind of makes it look like it has a little bit of a blanket or a sheet, so that is what we're going to do. Now you can get your seam gauge out, you can use your ruler, um, however you want to do it, but I like to use my mat. It's easy, it's quick, it's right here at my fingertips. My cutting mat is a grid. As you can probably see, it is inch um, squares, so I'm going to use that to help me make my hem. So I'm going to fold it. Again, this is wrong side up, and we are folding toward the wrong side to make our hem. I'm going to fold that an inch down. So I'm, I've went from my, this is two inches in here. I'm going to fold it in to one inch and I'm using my cutting mat to guide me and I'm going to secure that with pins. Now, if you have used fleece before, you know that you cannot you should not <laughs> be using your iron on it. So in the world of sewing, we love to press and steam our hems. They make them stay in place, but you can't do that on fleece. Fleece will melt under your iron. So instead of ironing it, I am securing it with pins. And I have a plaid that I'm using here. So I have grid lines here too. So I'm trying to line those up as best as I can. So that is what I have done. I've turned it over an inch and we are going to stitch this now down at the sewing machine. Again, I will be using a double row of stitching. I don't have a double needle. I've never used a double needle before. So I'm just gonna be doing it the old fashioned way and actually stitching twice. So let's go to the sewing machine and do that now. Okay, this is my Baby Lock Crescendo machine that I use 
uh, all the time for my sewing. All of this project can be completed on a regular sewing machine. So I have a, as I said, a universal needle in. I have my, this is called a zigzag foot for the baby lock machines. I use this foot all the time. You can see there's a clear plate right there. There's a wide um, mouth up here for the zigzagging motion, but I just really love having the capability <laughs> all the time of this foot. So this is the, the foot that I use all the time. So for our fleece, we're just gonna use a straight stitch. So I'm gonna make sure that I have my straight stitch on. I'm gonna make sure I have my back stitching capability on. And then I'm going to lengthen my stitch to a three, 3.0, which is a good top stitching length for me. You might know on your machine what you like to use for top stitching, you might not. So just lengthen your stitch length a little bit from the normal 2.5 length and that will give you a prettier top stitch. So let me grab my needle. <laughs> needle catcher there and then we're gonna get started so I'm gonna line this up and we're just top stitching so we're going to use about an eighth of an inch seam allowance from the um, folded this raw edge here so I'm not sewing up here I'm sewing down here to make a pretty hem so I'm gonna put my needle down my machine does have automatic backstitch, so I'm gonna tell tell you right now to backstitch um, in case I forget to do it because my machine's doing it for me. So here we go. Removing your pins as you go. I try to never sew over my pins. and then we're going to oh, there's my stitches really pretty you can see them because they're longer and we're going to go back up to the top and we're going to do that again I'm going to move over about an eighth of an inch it's it's a marking on my foot but you might not have that on your foot so just find you a nice seam allowance and just follow your original stitching again back stitching at the beginning and the end and that gives us a really pretty row of top stitching to make it look more like a little sheet or a blanket. So that is that part. Let's go back over to the cutting table. Okay, here is our hemmed front pouch. And now we are getting ready to make our sandwich. We're gonna sandwich all our pieces together. So take one of your blue pieces. And as I said before, fleece has to me a wrong side and a right side. So here's my fuzzy wrong side. And then here is my more clear um, right side. So for the first piece that you're gonna lay down, you're gonna lay that right side up. So facing me is the right side of the fabric, right side up. Next step is to take your hemmed pouch, the one we just got done hemming, and we're going to lay that face down. This one's an easy one to tell which way is the wrong way because our hem, we hemmed it to the wrong side of the fabric. So you're going to lay your uh, blanket piece right sides down on the uh, first blue piece there. Okay, this is this is a little bit of the tricky part and this took me a little, a few times. <laughs> <laughs> to get right. So I'm going to repeat it again for you. The blue, the first blue, right side up facing you. The pink, right side down. So this pink piece, the wrong side is facing you. 
Okay, and now we're gonna take our last blue piece, find your right and wrong side. That's more clear, so this is my right side, and I'm gonna lay it down, right sides down. So again, the wrong side will be facing me. And now we've made a little sandwich. You have all three layers laying right here on top of each other in front of you. And we are ready to clip and pin. Now I'm going to use a combination because I like to use my clips to hold all these layers together. However, I like to use my pens to tell me where to stop and start stitching. We have to leave a hole. So we are, we're going to sew all the way around and then we're going to flip it to the right side. In order to do the flipping, we have to leave a hole. So I'm going to make my hole up here in the corner. And this is important because we are making a pillow. Now you don't have to do the pillow portion. I'm showing you how to do the pillow. You could just not do a pillow at all and it would just be flat right there. It wouldn't have this pillow portion. In which case you could make your opening anywhere. But in order to do the pillow, the way I have done it, I have to leave my opening up here at the top where the pillow tube is going to be. So here is my opening for flipping. Okay, I've marked that up here with two pins. And now I'm going to take my clips and I'm going to secure those around the sides to hold my sandwich together. So let's do that here. Okay, it's all clipped and pinned in place, holding my sandwich together. Now I'm gonna take it to the sewing machine and I am going to sew. I'm gonna sew starting here at this pin, down to almost to the corner, but not through. I'm gonna turn my work and I'm gonna continue around all of the corners. And then when I get back to this pin, I'm going to backstitch. Remember to backstitch at the beginning and the end of your stitching. So I'm gonna go do that now and I'll be right back. Okay, I have my sandwich sewn together. I did a 2.5 stitch length with a quarter inch hem all the way around. So down, turned at my corner, turned again at this corner. One more, one more, and then I've left a opening here. So before we turn it, I want to cut off my corners. This one. Each corner, I just lop off the point. I'm doing this to cut down on bulk in my corners and so that it turns with more of a actual point instead of um, bulky, being bulky in the corners. Okay, go ahead and turn your project through the hole. And then I'm going to grab my point turner, and this actually came, <laughs> funny enough, in my polyfill uh, bag that I bought. It's been a while now, but um, yeah, so I purchased that and got the stick for free. So what I'm doing now is I'm gently, but firmly, <laughs> poking this into my corner and kind of using my fingers to pull that point through. Don't want to go through your stitches or your fabric. That's why the blunt end of the chopstick is so handy. And this one's gonna be a really tiny corner up there. You can see it very good. Um, it's gonna be really tiny because your opening is right here, but it will be fine once we close it up. Okay, so now your project should look something like this. Your pink portion should be right side up facing you now. Because of how we sandwiched everything together, this portion should be right side up. You should not see the raw edge of your fleece. You should see the nice, pretty, hemmed, folded edge, okay? So the next step is to make our pillow. So I'm gonna turn my project this way 
and I'm going to grab my ruler and I'm going to make a mark on here for my pillow. You can decide how big you want your pillow to be using um, this cat and these um, measurements. I have decided to make a three inch and uh, to go down three inches for my pillow. So I'm going to take my ruler and I'm going to lay the three inch there at the top as close as I can get it and take my marking tool this is just, just some chalk and I'm going to mark my line this is a stitching line we will now stitch right along this line and we will make our casing, our tube for our pillow to be filled here in a minute. So I'm gonna to go to the sewing machine and I'm going to stitch right along that line that I created. Two and a half stitch length. Um, make sure to uh, backstitch at the beginning and at the end. So let me go do that now. Okay, there is my little stitch line that I did with the chalk trimmed away my threads and now I'm ready to stuff the pillow with the polyfill. So I have polyfill here as I said you can use whatever. So let's stuff the pillow now. Okay that was actually the perfect amount of polyfill. <laughs> Probably couldn't have done that one again. Okay, so just yeah, massage it in there. Make sure it's not lumpy and bumpy into every corner. You can use the turning tool that actually was created for this <laughs> to stick it up into the corners to make them nice and full. Okay, so now we have that completed, but we have an opening here. So what I will do is I will turn that over so that it kind of hems itself and encloses there. And I will take a clip or two to secure it. And I'm gonna top stitch. This is your last step. I'm gonna top stitch from this corner down, 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 all the way down to here, turn at my corner, come across the bottom of the sleeping bag, turn at this corner, and then come up to the side. I will not top stitch along this top of the pillow, only on the sides. To show you what that's gonna look like, here I have started up here in the corner and went down turned at my corner, went across, turned at another corner, and come up the side. I did not go over the top of my pillow. So I'm going to go do that now. Okay, there we have the sleeping bag and pillow combination. I have top stitch, so I used a 3.0 thread length at a eighth of an inch seam allowance just to top, top stitch around the edge there. And I was able to catch my opening, so you would never even know that it was an opening. And I'm going to trim off any little threads and toss them aside. Pick them up in a second to throw away. And then check for fit. Stick the little cat down in there. And he's ready to roll. It looks so good. There you have the ta toy stuffed animal doll baby sleeping bag <laughs> tutorial. <laughs>
I would need a pretty big box for it and I just don't have that. But what I do have is some wrapping paper. So I'm gonna show you how to make a wrapping paper gift bag for odd shaped gifts. So what you'll need is just some regular wrapping paper. I do like the kind that has the grid, the grid lines in it, but if you don't have any, that's okay. This is purely decorative, but I have some string. I have a cute little gift tag for Addie. Just standard tape, scissors. These are the required things. <laughs> These are the unnecessary things. And then a hole punch to put my string through in a second. Okay, so let me show you how to do this. We're gonna take our wrapping paper and we're gonna unroll it until it's a pretty good size. And I'm going to kind of lay this out here and make sure that I could triple this because it's going to be folded in on itself twice. So I'm going to cut a piece of paper here. Set your wrapping paper aside. Put your toy aside. And so now I have this piece of pet wrapping paper here like this. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to fold the sides in toward the middle. I'm going to try to get them pretty close to each other. So fold one in approximately halfway, a little over halfway, and then just fold. Okay, so that's what that side looks like. And then I'm going to take this other side and I'm going to fold in toward the middle as well. And I'm going to overlap them. Now, how much you overlap them depends on how big your gift is. If this was a big basketball, I would want to leave it pretty, pretty wide here so the basketball could go in. This is pretty skinny, so I'm going to just kind of make it about that wide should be fine. You can line up your artwork if you <laughs> are that kind of a person. And then just fold. So this is what our paper looks like now. We folded it again, we folded it twice. So this side went in like this and we folded. And then this side came over like this, overlapping, and we folded again. Now I'm gonna take my tape and I'm gonna secure that line right there the overlap I'm going to secure with my tape. You don't have to use a lot. I think I end up using three pieces to just secure it there. Okay? Now I'm going to take one end and it doesn't matter which one. If you had directional print you might care but I really don't matter. And I'm going to fold it in like this. Now we're making the base of the bag. So depending on what you're putting in there, make sure your base will be big enough for it to sit into. So my base needs to be at least this wide. No problem at all. It's not that big. So I'm going to fold it up to about here. I'm going to fold. So I've just creased it again. Now I'm going to take that section and I'm going to open it like this and I'm going to fold it into a diamond shape. So you have to kind of push out your corners and fold them down until they make something of a diamond shape. This is strong wrapping paper. It's from Hobby Lobby. They make great wrapping paper, but it is kind of tough for folding. So there I've got one corner folded down. Now I'm gonna do the other one. So there I have made a flat a flat diamond with the bottom of my bag. Okay, it's not secured yet, I haven't taped it. 
but now I'm so now I'm going to tape it. So we're just making sure that that is secure. So just use one there. And you're just you're just making sure you keep your diamond shape. Now you want to fold in each side point toward the middle. And I like to overlap by a little bit. So that is what the bottom looks like. Looks like there. So here's my first flap. I folded it down, pressed a crease, and this is my second flap. And that is overlapping my first, and there's its crease. And now I'm going to tape this down. Now, I do tape this one really well. This is the bottom of your bag. And so you want it to be secure. So this is what your bottom, the bottom of your bag looks like. Sorry about the glare. There we go. Okay. Now let's fold the bag out. So here's your top. And I just reach in and gently press the base open. And there we go. There is the inside of your bag. There is the bottom of your bag. So now I'm going to see how big this is. It's pretty big, so I'm going to fold this down really pretty. I like to, again, triangle my corners. Triangle my corners. And then I like to fold it down like this to make it look kind of like a bag. So I made my creases here. Okay, and then I'm gonna open it up. And I'm going to place Addie's kitten in her new little sleeping bag inside. So the cat is inside. <laughs> and now you just crease your paper back along its lines that you made a second ago. So there's the top, nice and flat. There is the flap. Okay, and now let's do the decorative portion. Okay, so here is your bag. Again, I'll show you that kind of wink ways here. Completely made out of wrapping paper and tape. There's your bottom. The cat is inside. Makes a great little gift bag. And now we're going to do a little decorative up here on the top. So I'm going to take my hole punch. And I'm going to come in here and make two. A little ways away from each other. And I'm going to take my string. I'm going to cut off some and then I just thread them through. So I'm threading through one side and then I'm coming out the other. So here's our string and then I'm going to put Addie's little tag here on. Right side facing up. Okay. And then I'm just going to make myself a little bow. Tie a bow here. So that is the bow, and I like to trim these off and not leave them super, super long. And then on the back, you can see that it's still open. So 
So I'm just going to take a little piece of tape and tape it right there. We have our wrapping paper bag. Super cute way to use up leftover wrapping paper or whatever you have laying around and the kids get to still get to tear into wrapping paper, which is what I love. There we go. <laughs> enjoyed those two tutorials from me today. They are kind of a useful kind of thing that I hope Addie will enjoy receiving for Christmas and also a useful way to use up some wrapping paper around your house. So now I'm going to get to the part of my video today that involves a giveaway. Now Sherry has so generously donated some items to give away to our viewers in this collaboration, as well as getting all kinds of businesses on board with her. So there are some amazing prizes that she has to give away. And she is allowing me to give away one to my viewers, which is so sweet of Sherry. So in order to qualify for the giveaway, please use the word nativity in your comment down below. I will be looking for all of the comments that use the word nativity, putting your name in a hat, so to speak, and then drawing a winner. I will announce the winner and then send you over to Sherry's channel so that you can claim your prize. Thank you so much, Sherry, for your generosity this Vlogmas season. Okay, let me know down in the comments below if you've enjoyed this video today, my first ever tutorial, so please be kind. <laughs> I am learning along the way. It was a lot of work, but a lot of fun. So I hope you got something out of today's video. If you have not subscribed already to my channel, please consider doing so. Give this video a thumbs up if you enjoyed this kind of content, and please leave me a comment down below. Have you ever made anything like these uh, toy sleeping bags for your children or grandchildren before? And have you ever used a wrapping paper gift bag trick? So I so enjoyed spending time with you today. You guys take care. Bye-bye.